Hello, hello. Welcome to another Facebook Live Masterclass. I'm just, I know there's going to be a little bit of a delay. I want to make sure that we are live and on so we're not just talking to ourselves. Although I know Katrina and I don't care if I talk to myself and I'm sure she doesn't care either. Yes, we are good to go. Awesome. Well, welcome everyone. We are talking all things brain dance today. So here's what I want to do. I know I did a little poll earlier and many of you reached out and you commented and I love that. But now I need to, for Katrina to see where our audience is at. She's been in school all day because she teaches and she rushed over to be with us today. And I'm so very thankful and I'm going to bring her on in a bit. But right now, what I want you to do is I want you to put a smiley face if you use the brain dance in your classes. And I want you to put a sad face if you don't use the brain dance. That's all. Smiley face if you do. Sad face if you don't. Don't worry. We are going to turn that frown upside down uh, by the end of our time together. So go ahead. Get in those comments. Let us see who is here and who we are speaking to. We are so excited to jump in. And while you are doing that, allow me to introduce myself. If you have just stumbled upon Discover Dance, welcome. My name is Andrea Trench, and I am the creator and founder of Discover Dance Early Childhood Dance Education. And I am an online resource for teachers who teach specifically five and under early childhood dance education. I have I offer tons of tips and tricks and class activities. I do have a full program. It's a customizable curriculum that's being sold or being taught in about 150 dance studios world, worldwide. I've been teaching for about 20 years and um, I was a partner in a dance studio for 12 years until I shifted careers and made this my full time gig. So I am glad you're here. I see you. Okay, I see you, Michelle. That's all right. Your frown is going to turn upside down. We are going to help you. Hello, Noel. Yes, you are a big old smiley face. Hi, Jenny. Hi, Sarah. Welcome. So glad you are here. Don't worry. There is going to be a replay. So I know I'm super passionate about the brain dance. And when I'm passionate, I start talking really fast because <laughs> I just keep going. And I'm sure Katrina will have a lot to say and a lot of really great info. So if you miss something, don't worry, you can check out the replay. Let me continue to see those happy faces if you use the brain dance, sad faces if you don't, and that's okay. I'm glad you're here. This is why we're doing this. And I'm going to go ahead and introduce our special guest. So let me bring her up. This is Katrina Kohi. Did I say that right? You got it. Nice job. <laughs> awesome. Katrina, you are the CEO of Different Drummer Dance. And I have to say that I actually started stalking you because I was looking for brain dance ideas. I feel like, you know, when you know the brain dance, and we're going to get into this, you, you get to a point where you start to overthink it and you're like, oh, what can I do? What can I do? And so I was just Googling it and I came upon your YouTube channel, I believe. And you have a whole playlist of monthly, right? Monthly. Yes. Yeah. They unfortunately, I haven't been able to add many new ones yet um, because I have a different kind of teaching gig now, but I will have a specific like December kind of holiday one coming soon. But there are tons Ooh. of stuff on YouTube. There are tons of videos on YouTube that are kind of like archives, like things that I've done in the past. So that is a great resource, I hope, for people who are interested in doing more brain dancing. Yeah, absolutely. But you are so much more than brain dancing. So why don't you tell um, our listeners who you are? What do you do? Yeah, totally. I'll try and keep it short and sweet. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like so many of us who are educators, you know, I started dancing at a young age and got into teaching kind of just by default at my studio because, you know, when you're like 16, 17, they need student teachers. And so I started teaching that mm -hmm. way and then just really kept going. I taught all through um, college um, and the RAD was a big part of my dance life growing up. So when I was in my in my 20s, I went through the RAD uh, syllabus and got their certification. So I'm a certified RAD teacher as well. But I didn't really come across the brain dance until kind of later in my teaching um, career, I suppose. Um, so it's been a really important part of me finding kind of like my own special um, groove in teaching. Mm -hmm. I felt like there weren't a lot of other studios or other um, teachers that I knew of that were using it. And I felt like it was so, 
so awesome and so important that I just grabbed onto it. Um, and one of the other things that has been really important in my teaching is a focus on body positivity, which is another thing that folks will see if they check out my website or any of my uh, YouTube videos. Um, because of my own kind of journey with disordered eating. And um, so that's a big part of my focus now. I also offer classes online for both dance educators and teachers about how to bring body positivity um, and empowerment into their classes. And a lot of that has to do with language and how we're talking to ourselves. So as a result mm -hmm. of that, I'm also super into affirmations and um, positive thinking and mindset kind of work. So. I'd say that all kind of three, four of those things, um, brain dance, affirmations, body positivity, mantras, all of those are kind of really central and integral to the teaching that I do now in my work with different drummer dance. I love that. And following you on Instagram and Facebook, this is actually, is this the first time we're meeting face to face? I, I think, think so. so. Which seems so weird. It does. I've been Instagram and like Facebook stalking you for a while. So <laughs> it feels like we go way back. Yeah, it does. It does. But it's nice to be here, you know, face to face, even though you're in New York and I'm in Chicago. But um, following you on your social media platforms is really inspiring. I even before we went live, you guys, I was like, give me a give me a mantra for going live because <laughs> It, it really is all about our thoughts and in our head. Um, and I think when it comes to brain dance, it's the same thing. It's like you can look at it and you can be like, oh, I don't get it. I'm not doing it. Or you can take the time to, to get to know. You don't need to know all the brain science behind it. You just need to know that mm, it works, mm -hmm. that there's research out there. And that is why this masterclass is here. We're going to come together and keep it very conversational. And we are going to give you some tips to really dive into the brain dance and start implementing it in your classes or give you more ideas. Cause I know a lot of people have, let's see, let's, uh, Jenny, she uses the brain dance. Awesome. Betsy. Awesome. Good. So keep those smiley face and sad faces coming in, even if you're on the replay so that we can connect with you and really help you. This is why we're here. So you said that you came upon the brain dance later in life. Do you specifically remember where that was? Was it from a friend, a training? Yeah, it's funny. I actually remember like the exact conversation and the exact time that it happened. I was actually doing, I was interviewing for a teaching job. This was when I had gone back to college to complete my degree. So I was in my late 20s. Um, and at that point, I had really probably been teaching for close to 10 years at that point. Um, and I, so I was interviewing for a teaching job and the interviewer asked me, okay, so we do a lot of, you know, brain dance. We always do a warm up with all of our classes for the brain dance. Do you know what the brain dance is? And I was like, nope. And I felt like, I felt surprised and kind of shocked and mm -hmm. also like, oh, oh shoot. Like, is this something that I should know about? Like I, I considered myself a pretty you know, with it, well-educated, well-read teacher. I tried to stay up on like, you know, new teaching practices and things that were happening. But she mentioned the brain dance and I, it was just like in my brain, it was like crickets. I had no clue what it was. Um, so she gave me a brief kind of overview of what it was. And I was like, that sounds fascinating. So after the interview, I went home and I um, did a little bit of research and then um, I did actually get that teaching job. So then it actually became part of my job to learn even more about the brain dance. Um, and I started using it in the classes that I was teaching for that studio and then other classes that I, I was teaching at other studios and on my own as well. And I was just hooked. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was, it's funny that I remember like the exact time mm -hmm. because it has come to play such an important part in my life. And I remember like once I knew what the brain dance was, I was like, why did nobody tell me about this sooner? Yeah. Why did I not learn this sooner? Why was this not in any of my education classes that I took? Or why did none of my teachers know about it? Mm -hmm. I know that it like, like you've said, it's not a bad thing at all. I was just surprised that there's not more knowledge around it. I totally agree. I, um, I'm curious, if you're watching the video and you use the brain dance, where did you hear about the brain dance? Because I feel like, and I'm assuming, Sorry, I'm assuming, but I feel like if you were maybe in a dance program at a university or college, perhaps that is where you heard of Anne Green Gilbert and the brain dance. I know for me, that was the case. You know, um, I was a junior at U the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign, and I took a course on teaching kids. 
or they actually exist. <laughs> like there's a there's a way to teach kids properly. And uh, it was with Kate Cooper in our very first class. She played the Anne Green Gilbert DVD. <laughs> and we watched the DVD and she and I just remember I again specifically remember thinking, wow, this is impressive. This is a fantastic tool and every dance teacher needs to know about it. But when I graduated and I got into the dance studio world, nobody was doing it. So <laughs> I and there were hardly any resources besides what Anne Green Gilbert had. So it's really nice that um, there are more resources. I'm definitely on. Um, I am working on doing more with the brain dance. You have done a lot. And I know Jessica Griffin is another brain dance nerd. Um, she has incredible resources. So it's like, we can do this. <laughs> We're going to get the message yeah. out. Yeah. So let's see some people. Oh, from me. Oh, well, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That's good to know. Uh, thank you. I heard about it from you and I did a BFA in dance performance. I first learned through you. All right. Well, you know what? This resource is working and I am, I am happy to continue to um, share more about the brain dance and have Katrina here to help me my fellow brain dance nerve nerd. So Katrina, yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Can you tell us what is the brain dance? Yeah. So in like very, like you say, kind of simple pared down basic terms. Um, what I understand the brain dance to be is a series of movements that are done in sequential order that take us and our students back through a uh, very, important stages of neurological development. So we've got things like breath and tactile and upper body and lower body. So these are all things and movements that we go through, um, you know, when we're babies, when we're first learning to, to touch things, to grab things. Um, and so doing the brain dance movements in their specific order can be a really great way to go back and fill in any kind of neurological gaps or any kind of trauma that we might have had as children or adults. Um, I know some of the work, um, some of the research has said that there's really no, like it's great for mm -hmm. young children, but it's it's great for everybody as well. So mm -hmm. teachers, when you're doing it, you are getting a brain boost yeah. as well. You are filling in those neurological patterns. Um, so it's the movements are just, a, like I said, a really great way to go back and kind of fill in, in any gaps that we might have, um, kind of heal any trauma. And it just is a really like wonderful holistic tool for getting dancers to to move and incorporate mind, body, soul. You know, they're really working holistically. It's not just, you know, we're training really hard and it's all about bar work or it's all about center or core. We're really treating and educating the entire dancer literally from the inside out, which is what I mm -hmm. find so exciting about it. Same. And yes, that's great. And uh, I. We'll also point out one more time, and we're going to talk about her a lot because we all love Anne Green Gilbert. But Anne Green Gilbert is the one who created this pattern, and she has several books, and we're going to talk about those later and other resources to help you continue your journey in the brain dance realm. Um, so let's, I'm going to go quickly through the eight patterns. So these are the, our developmental patterns. So I'm going to say, I'm going to pull you down. Let's see. I'm getting fancy, Katrina, over here. Do Let it. me see. do it. <laughs> Give me a mantra. No, I'm just kidding. That's I'm good. It. I'm good. I could do this. <laughs> All right. So here are our eight patterns. So what I also love about the brain dance is it's a framework. And if you're a Discover Dance teacher, meaning you you use my curriculum, you know I'm all about the frameworks and the structure. So you have these eight patterns. And within those eight patterns, you create activities for those patterns. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain. These are very um, just to the point uh, definitions of each of the patterns. But in the books, you can get more in depth with the brain science behind it all. But um, we didn't want to overwhelm you with all the brain science information. We just want to get you started on the right track. So the first pattern is our breath. Right. It's the first thing we do when we are born. We take a nice deep breath in. How many times do you tell your dancers breathe, especially your older dancers? Right. We got to start if we start them younger and getting them used used to breathing and aware of their breath. It's going to help them as they progress in their dance training. So 
the breath pattern is going to increase the flow of oxygen and bring awareness to our breath. Simple. Think about what you do in your warm ups now. Breath could be just a simple deep breath in and push it out before you start class. Or if you do port bra, you could do a big old. Do it a couple of times. Nice and simple. It's not complicated to breathe. <laughs> Next up is our tactile. So this is any kind of touch. We're going to wake up our skin with different ways of touching our skin. So whether we're tapping or we're smacking or we're brushing, this is going to develop our sensory inter integration and proprioception. So we're feel feeling ourselves. We're waking up that skin. We're waking up all those nerves that are in our skin and just telling our body to wake up. And that's as simple as if you're um, say you're seated in a circle and you're stretching your legs out nice and straight and you're going to take your port bra up and you're going to reach your fingers to your toes. All you do is just smack up your body da, 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 and do it again and then brush up your body. Very simple, nice and easy tactile sensations on the skin. Uh, the third one is our core distal. So we are going to explore our full body extension and develop our core strength. This is pattern is going to lead to proper body alignment. First of all, how many times do you say dancers use your core? Do your dancers even know where their core is? Do they know where all their energy and power is coming from? So we're going to pull everything into our core nice and small, and we're going to stretch out great big. And we're going to pull everything in, and maybe we're going to do it on one leg for our older dancers. So that's our core distal, pulling in and stretching out. You could also do it on the floor. You could do it standing so many different ways. Next up is our head tail. All my modern dancer lovers, you know how much we use our head tail. We're going to develop our spine flexibility and mobility throughout our spine. This is easiest to do with the little ones. When you're on your hands and knees, you're going to do um, your cat and your cow. Your cat and your cow. Sorry, I'm not dancing full out because I don't have the space. <laughs> your cat and, your cat. and then you're going to give a head tail wiggle through that spine. The fourth one is upper lower. So we're going to develop our upper lower body coordination. So for the easiest way to do for your littles is like through for your preschoolers is to have them sit on the floor. If they can crisscross your, their legs, awesome. That's going to keep them nice and still. Or if they need to sit on them or hook them, whatever is comfortable for them. But they do not move. Then you're going to move just your upper body. Do you do port bra in your class? Okay, well, that is your upper body movement. We're not moving our lower body. Or say you're standing, you're going to glue your hands and you're going to do plies or you're going to do tendus. Um, if you're tapping, you're going to do some heel digs to each side. There's tons of different ways to incorporate upper lower body. All you do is you freeze the upper body and you move the lower body. You freeze the lower body and you move the upper body. Next up is body side. So you're going to cut yourself. This is what I do with my four and five year olds. You're going to split yourself down the middle. And you're going to make a great big X. This side of our body, imagine I'm moving my leg too, because I am. It's going to be vanilla ice cream. This side is going to be chocolate ice cream. We're going to freeze our chocolate side and we're going to move our vanilla side. Then you freeze your vanilla side and move your chocolate side. You could also do this as making a book and you're going to close your book. And you're going to open your book. And this is where we're going to develop our side dominance and horizontal eye tracking. So when you're moving and you're moving that body, follow that thumb. This helps develop our horizontal eye tracking that leads to reading. Right? Because we have to remember we are teaching the developing child first. The dancer second. The developing child first has to be top on our list. The next one, our seventh pattern, is the most difficult, and that's our cross lateral. And this is going to develop our uh, coordination between our opposite quadrants, our right side and our left side of our brain. So going back to our ice cream, for our older dancers, we're going to stand and we're going to reach our ice cream, our vanilla hand to our chocolate foot and our chocolate hand to our vanilla foot. And we're just going to go opposite or knee to elbow. For little ones, have them sit down, put their legs out in front of them, their arms out in front of them, and just have them cross. Taking turns crossing each one. Do that same thing with the legs. Then put them together and do both arms and legs. This is difficult for little ones. You will see them struggle. You will see them just do one side, right? But the more you do it, the more they're going to get it. 
They're going to work that developmental pattern and achieve that activity. And our last one is our vestibular. So this is going to improve balance. If you watched our Power of Props Masterclass, you know that in order to improve our balance, we have to challenge our balance. And by doing so, we are spinning, swaying, anything to get that head and tail moving and grooving. I just, very simple, stand tall, spin around a few times, stop, take a couple deep breaths in. But what if the little ones want to fall down? Well, you give them expectations. We're going to spin around. When I say stop, you stop. Three rules. There is no wiggling. There's no wobbling. There's no falling down. You spin, spin, spin. You say stop. You call out the dancers who are not wiggling, wobbling, or falling down. You ignore those that are goofing around and falling down and think it's hilarious. Then you take a deep breath in. And then you spin around the other way. So those are eight developmental patterns, breath, tactile, core distal, head tail, upper lower, body sides, cross lateral, and vestibular. Woo. Now, Katrina, let me pull you back up here. That is um, a lot. So, so good, though. <laughs> it is so good. I love it. And that was just like the speedy version. Otherwise, we could be here for hours, um, which I do think there needs to be more. You know, there's so many uh, teacher training workshops out there and summits and all these conferences. And I, I am I need to see more brain dance because this is this tool is so fantastic. It's so versatile. I mean, any age, any stage, any genre with props, like you said, any age, you could do it with, um, with uh, grown up and taught classes where they help the little ones. I know Jessica does a lot with the babies. So much. Good I, stuff. I don't yeah. do babies. <laughs> so if you teach babies, look up Jessica with IntelliDance. Um, and then, you know, uh, senior citizens, they can sit in a chair. They're all going to get these benefits from the developmental patterns. How do you like to use them in your classes? Yeah, I love warming up with them. Like the students come in, that's the first thing we do. We usually have a seat um, and they know that that's what's coming next. We're, we start with whatever breath exercise we're doing. Um, sometimes I will also incorporate a book because I love using mm. books and literacy in uh, my little kid classes. And so many books to pair so nicely, not only with movement, but with the brain dance. Um, mm. So sometimes I'll, we'll read a book and we'll talk about, you know, like a character in the book, how might they breathe or were they walking? Were they angry? You know, maybe we're angry and we're like pounding fists and that's the tactile. So that's something that I like to do sometimes is just incorporate a book. Um, but yeah, I love to use it mostly as a warm up. Sometimes it's like a brain break if things have gotten a little mm -hmm. bit chaotic, if we've been moving around and the energy is really high and I can tell we need to like have a moment where we come mm -hmm. back down. Um, I might use just really quick snippets of it then. And maybe, maybe I don't even go through the whole thing. Maybe it's just mm -hmm. like a quick little breath exercise or something. Um, and one of the things that I struggled with when I was first using the brain dances, I was like, oh, this is great. I love doing all these things, but how do I do this for older kids? Mm -hmm. um, and one thing that I found that works really well for your like elementary and even preteen and teens is to do um, the brain dance with a game that I call traffic. So with this one, you set um, kids up in the corner of the room. So you've got four corners in your room and there's a line of kids in each corner. And I think I'm, I have an example of this on my YouTube video as well, or channel if people wanna check it out. But so the opposite corners have to move across the space to each other. Mm -hmm. So then, I mean, when everybody does this, they are gathering in the middle of the room and that's where the traffic happens. So we try to avoid the traffic, right? We're trying not to all crash into each other in the middle. So it's great for spatial awareness as well. But so I will do all, I'll go through all of those eight elements. So we might start with, you know, a big breath before we start. And then we start marching. We're picking up our knees and we're tapping as we're marching mm -hmm. to the opposite sides of the room. And the kids are just funneling through one right after the other. So we might do tactile going across and then we're doing like frog jumps or something to go across as well. So I just, I find more like kind of dynamic movements within mm -hmm. 
all of the elements of the brain dance and we take them in that floor pattern. And that's great for, you know, your older kids and your even like your teens and your preteens if you incorporate any kind of like obstacle course into it. And I know you mm -hmm. love an obstacle course like I do. Um, it just kind of sets the bar up a little bit for that age group, especially because I'm sure we all know that that age group can be sensitive to being treated or feeling like they're being treated like babies. And if they're seeing like, you know, brain dance with the younger kids, they might be a little bit resistant to it. That's what I found in my experience. Mm -hmm. so doing something like making it into an obstacle course or a traffic kind of game or doing it in partners or small groups where they have to kind of brainstorm, brainstorm their own take on breath or tactile or whatever mm -hmm. is, I found a really fun way and interactive way to get those older students doing the brain dance as well. That's a wonderful idea. I love that traffic idea. And I love that book idea, too. Yeah. I like to, um, for my three-year-olds, we do more of the nursery rhymes. I'm big on incorporating nursery rhymes because it's so great for their language development and their music skills. So we will, I, I've created a lot of different uh, play on nursery rhymes and you know incorporate like Hickory Dickory Dock or the Itsy Bitsy Spider. Like those are all good ones to um, incorporate. And then for my four and five year olds, we do um, genre specific. So my my program isn't a genre specific program. So it's not like I people say, well, what style of dance is it? Well, it's a conceptual approach. So I can do any style I want yeah. <laughs> and I do. Um, and one of the ways that I do that is through a genre specific brain dance. So we'll do a hip hop brain dance. We'll do a ballet brain dance. Um, I don't teach tap to my little ones, but we'll do a rhythmic brain dance, which is super important for their tap training as they continue on in their training. So it's just so darn versatile. It's like you can literally do it with anything. Uh, I see that Nellie says that she loves to do it with props. That is a fantastic idea you know, grab a scarf and then go through those patterns. And I don't recommend you do it on the fly. I'm a planner. If, if you're one of those that just can do it on the fly, go ahead. I'm more of a planner, so I will definitely need to plan it out. But that's a great idea. How about um, I talk a lot about doing the freeze dance as the first thing. Why don't you do a freeze dance brain dance? Right. So as the music is playing before you even start, take a couple of deep breaths in that music starts play on the beat. Go in, in it. Right. You got some big old big uh, jumping jacks. You're doing those different patterns and then you freeze and then you pick up where you left off and do another. I'm going to I'm going to do a freeze. I'm going to do a freeze dance brain dance. I'm watch for a okay. video on that. I'm on yeah. it. <laughs> That's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. So there really is so many different ways to use it in your classes. And I do know that a lot of teachers use it in their actual academic classes as brain breaks because mm -hmm. these kids, they, <laughs> they sit too long. And um, we know that when they sit too long, that's when their behavior is coming coming out because they need that vestibular movement. They need movement. So they'll take what's called brain breaks in schools. And so this is an excellent way. If you're a school teacher, you can incorporate brain dance into your classes as well. So what do you think are some top tips that you would give some of our um, viewers on how to get started with the brain dance? Um, well, I know for me, when I was first starting to use it, I was just overwhelmed by, you know, like, well, how do I, how do I remember what they are? Mm -hmm. um, and so, I mean, we're all, we all have different styles of learning, mm -hmm. right? Like if you are a visual person like me, I just wrote it out. Like when I was planning my classes, I wrote out the different elements. I had a little shorthand. So for breath, it was B for tactile. It was T, core distal was C slash D. So maybe writing it out for you to, you know, kind of get it in your in your body and seeing it. I know you have awesome posters, which are great mm -hmm. for like a visual reference. Um, doing it yourself, you know, if you're a kinetic learner and you just need to get it in your body and make it into a choreography, you know, so maybe you're mm -hmm. not stopping in between each one. You've just you've made it into a dance and you can flow through it. That might help with the um, with the memory aspect of well mm -hmm. as well. Um, and as far as other tips, you know, just finding other teachers like you and I connected, um, finding other teachers who use the brain dance and 
asking them like, well, what have you done? What has been really successful? And, you know, finding these other awesome people like us who use the brain dance <laughs> and connecting with them and reaching out. And, you know, we all have great tips and resources. And I, most of us educators love to share um, and not being afraid to ask questions either. And mm -hmm. you know, there's so many great resources now, whether you're buying a book on Amazon of Anne Green Gilbert's or you're shuffling through YouTube to find other folks who do brain dances. We're so lucky with all the technology that we have that there's mm -hmm. really no lack of resources. Um, but those would be some of my top tips. I know those are some things that I struggled with when I was first like learning the brain dance and trying to figure out how to incorporate it and how to make it a priority in my classes. That's great. Those are great tips. Yeah. Um, my number one tip is don't overthink it. And I'm an overthinker, so I get stuck too. But it's like, it, it's not that difficult. Think about what you're doing in your warm up right now and then put those in the pattern like just kind of tuck them in and then fill in all the blanks right so you're doing a lot of these things already already we want to do the port de bras we we move our upper body we move our lower body we're we're moving our spine we're reaching out from our core so we're already doing those things it's just putting them in the brain dance pattern. I know when I started out, we had whiteboards on our wall, but for a while I was mobile. So I had, they have um, the trifold whiteboard. I don't know if you've ever seen that where it'll just stand yeah. up on the ground. So I would write it on that. Um, if you're, if you write on the mirror, I write on the mirror. I will do whatever, I, <laughs> whatever it takes. Um, I've written on my hand. I actually, after our teacher training workshop in August, I had a teacher who wrote it on her forearm. Right. Just to remember the patterns, because yeah. it is a lot to remember. So definitely think about that. But the best thing is that there are guided songs out there that mm -hmm. will talk you through. So and let me go ahead and I'll pull up those resources for you. Let's see. I will. Here it is. So these are some of the resources that you can find online. So we have our Brain Compatible Dance Education book by Ann Green Gilbert. We also have Creative Dance for All Ages. Now, I do believe she goes more in depth with the brain dance in the Brain Compatible Dance Education. But if you're teaching, I was going to say little ones, but no, if you're teaching, you need both of these books. She is a genius. Um, so you need those books. Also, she has um, she teamed up with Eric Chappelle and they have brain dance music. So it's a whole album. Um, I'm sure you can get it on Amazon, maybe CD Baby and also on her website, which after this live, I will go in and link into um, the comments. So it's Eric Chappelle and they have different variations. They'll talk you through it um, step by step or they'll just give you keywords or they'll just give you like chimes and it's instrumental music so that you know that it's time to switch. Also Brain Bop by Kate Cooper. Um, she was the teacher that I found out that I took from at U of I and she's, this album is actually on Spotify. So you can go on there right now and look it up and she has some guided songs, um, some, some nursery fun little rhymes for the little, little ones. And then she has a children's, more of your elementary school uh she talks you through and then she also has in instrumentals where it changed when the pattern changes the music changes and then of course different drummer dance youtube channel has a ton of videos she did um katrina did monthly she has monthly um brain dances on there so each month is a different theme was there a dinosaur one or a dragon one what was that it was a dragon one <laughs> I know there's so many fun ones. Yeah. So, yeah. And it's great because again, I'm going to bring you back on Katrina. It's great because it's because it's so versatile. You can do dinosaurs. If you have a summer camp and it's under the sea, you can certainly do it under, an under the sea uh, brain dance. So there's just and seasons and yeah, possibilities are endless. Totally. But the framework is there and the research is behind it. So it's like, you know, it's it's a must have. Mm -hmm. All right, Katrina, as we wrap this up, I don't want to keep our viewers too long. We are all busy, busy people. 
Is there anything else you want to say about the brain dance that we didn't get to? If you have questions, now is the time. Go ahead and pop them in the comments. But Katrina, do you have anything else you want to say? Um, well, I've a little bit too to what we were talking about before as far as tips, you know, like because I love mindset work so much, like don't don't beat yourself up. Like if you, yeah. <laughs> if you haven't started the brain dance yet and you feel like you're behind or like you're a bad teacher because you haven't mm -hmm. done it yet, like don't, no, just knock that off. Like, mm -hmm. and if you go to do a brain dance one class and it totally falls apart or you get lost or whatever, like don't beat yourself up. Just just keep going. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like that's, I don't know. I feel like as teachers, we all need to like kind of pump ourselves up a little bit and encourage each other when we can. Like you are trying something new. You're, you're here, you've shown up to try something new and educate yourself, which is so awesome. Um, so that's the, that's the biggest step, right? And you will find your own way to adapt this material into your mm -hmm. programs and your classes. Um, I mean, you and I have been doing it for a while now. So this mm -hmm. is, you know, us like 10 years or I don't, I, I don't, can't speak for you, but you know, we've been doing this for a while mm -hmm. now. So I think it's great that so many of you have shown up to, you know, now learn more about this and incorporate it into your, into your classes and your practices, but don't let it like, don't let it weigh you down as far as like, oh, I haven't, I haven't done this before. I feel bad for not having do it. You're here, you showed up, that's awesome. Just keep going. Yes, that is great. And I will say something too, when you're teaching it to a specifically really little ones, don't think you're going to get through the whole thing. Oh, no. <laughs> no, it's going to take a while to build up to it because it will start to fall apart because you're giving these dancers, remember, this is stimulating their brain, right? That's a lot to take in when you're doing all of these different patterns. So take your time, do maybe four of them to start and then move on to something else because it's going to take you a little bit longer. Take your time. And then if you find that it's not working, move on. I also, I don't recommend changing them a lot because yeah. you will find that the patterns are difficult for some, especially now in this day and age when kids aren't moving as much. So they're mm -hmm. having difficulty making these connections, especially the cross lateral. You're yeah. going to see a lot of kids do that same side, same elbow to knee and or they'll stop and they'll really think about it because mm -hmm. their brain, they're trying to get that movement. So, um, Take your time with it. I'm going to be honest. I did Anne's like actual brain dance that she has on her DVD for 10 years before I realized, oh yeah, I can do something else. Like I can do whatever I want, but I was so into it and it was working that I didn't even change it. And you know, everybody did a great job. No one was bored with it. I wasn't really bored with it. So yeah, it's okay if you stick with one for a long time until you get comfortable right? And you get more confident. We do have a question from Victoria. Hey, girl, Victoria, what about a mom doing hand over hand for the crossovers for a struggling dancer? Hmm, do you, what age, Victoria? I'm guessing you're talking like little, little. I would say, so for crossover, I don't know, do you have, I have an idea. Do you have an idea, Katrina? You go first, you go first okay. and then I'll chime in. So for like little, little ones, it could be simple as just swaying side to side, right? It doesn't have to necessarily be the elbow to knee or the foot to hand, cause that is gonna be difficult. And I'm guessing if you're talking about two, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so you're, she's a discovered dance teacher. So, so for the two years, I would just, simple as crossing side to side or maybe like tapping over but i wouldn't get this is probably going to be that's too complicated for a two-year-old yeah do you have the anything other else suggestion i might add on um is there's there's a move in yoga where they call it like knocking on heaven's door where you're basically just standing in like a second position with soft mm -hmm. knees and you're doing that same swaying yeah. thing but you're taking the hand and kind of tapping it over to the waist or the side so you're mm -hmm. still getting that cross lateral movement. Um, mm -hmm. And you know, you can be a tree, whatever mom or whoever can help with that same motion. Um, and if they, you could even try maybe doing two different color scarves, you know, like maybe mm -hmm. you've got a blue and a red and the red has to come over to one side and the blue mm -hmm. or whatever has to go over to the other side. So they also kind of have the visual of the color going over. That might be another thing to try. 
That's a great one too. And Katie says, yeah, she does that in our peer and chat classes and the moms very gently cross over and eventually the little ones do start to do it on their own. That's great. And also, you know, we're talking about crossing over, but it's simple as, oh, that's a good one for partners too. Oh, yeah. Little, okay. Okay. <laughs> I feel like you and I nerd, 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 nerd. <laughs> um, but crawling is crossing the midline. So just get on your hands and knees and start going in different pathways. So um, anything that's just crossing that midline does it again. It's not as difficult as we tend to think it is. Yeah. Sometimes I still overthink it. So, all right. That was a great question, Victoria. And thank you for chiming in, Katie. We are going to wrap this up by pulling up some info. Let me get rid of you. Sorry, Katrina. <laughs> Don't go anywhere though. All right. So here's, if you want to learn more about Discover Dance or Different Drummer Dance, these are our websites. My website is discoverdance.net. Katrina's is differentdrummerdance.com. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, Spotify, YouTube, and Pinterest. But Katrina, you wanted to say something about your, is it, let me see. Oh boy, hold on. See if I can get it in there. Ooh, All right. Oh, look at that. So fancy. All right. You were going to say that your Spotify may be under your name. Yes. So my Spotify account is under Katrina Kohi. So if you go to my website, you will be able to see how to spell out my name because it's a little bit uh, different. But if you search my just my full name on Spotify, you should be able to find me and all the playlists that I've got over there. Fantastic. Katrina, thank you so much for being here. Oh, this was fun. Yeah, oh, it is fun, right? I hope you guys, um, viewers, that you got something out of this. Keep the questions coming. Um, and also, if you have ideas, I'm always looking for ideas. How about you, Katrina? Always, forever. Always ever. learners. Never <laughs> stop learning. Yeah. So um, if you're a brain dance nerd, a share, please. Sharing is caring. So definitely share with us all of your great ideas and look out for both of us as we continue this journey for brain dance and to help you bring more into your classes. All yeah. right. Thank you Girl. so much for having me. Oh, thank you. We're going to do this again. We'll have to think of something else. We'll we'll come together for another master class. You guys have a fantastic weekend.